Netherlands. A wealthy nation, densely populated and well known for its social tolerance. It is the European part of the Kingdom of the Netherlands, which consists of the Netherlands, the Netherlands Antilles and Aruba in the Caribbean. But what is it that made the Netherlands one of the ten richest nations in the world? Where did all that wealth come from? What is the origin of the Dutch royal family's fortune of an estimated eight billion dollars? Enter the Golden Age. The Dutch history books speak fondly about the era of great prosperity that spanned the 17th century. By 1750, the Netherlands was the foremost commercial and maritime power of Europe, turning Amsterdam from an insignificant fisherman town into the financial center of the world. It also represents the golden age of Dutch art with painters like Rembrandt and Vermeer. Dominating the world trade, the Dutch established a great colonial empire and operated the largest fleet of merchants of all Western nations. Under supervision of the Dutch East India Company, huge profits returned from the East Indies. The Dutch soon governed their territories in order to maintain the trade. Less prominent in the Dutch history books is the story about the West India Company, the government incorporated trading organization that would share the world trade with its East India counterpart. It is a dark chapter in the Dutch history, a story about how the Dutch enriched themselves through transatlantic slave trade, piracy, and smuggling. The West India Company was founded in 1621 and was given authority to conduct business and military action in West Africa and the Americas. Initially trading tobacco, sugar, and gold, the Dutch soon excelled in the trading of African slaves. Although the West India Company formally did not engage in slave trading prior to 1630, in 1619, American colonist John Smith recorded, about the last of August came a Dutch man that sold us 20 niggers. The ships of the West India Company sailed a route that became known as the Triangle Voyage. This journey started in one of the many Dutch harbors and took the ships to the Dutch forts on the African Gold Coast. Slaves were bought or traded, and as many as 700 African slaves were loaded as merchandise in each ship and were referred to as heads, as in heads of cattle. From Africa, the ships would cross the Atlantic, sailing towards the island of Curaçao, the Dutch colony that had grown into the biggest slave depot in the Caribbean by the 1650s. The hard conditions on board, poor nutrition and disease, caused a 20% death rate among the enslaved Africans. In the reported tragedy of 1738, the Dutch slave ship Loosden sinks in front of the Suriname coast. As the crew heads for the lifeboats, 702 of the 716 slaves aboard drown, locked into the deck below. For those who made it, their future didn't seem a lot better. The weaker slaves were usually auctioned off early. The prime slaves were sold individually to the highest bidder, separated from their families. They were sold for about $100 per person, and merchants would ship them to the plantations in Suriname, Brazil, and other colonies, facing a life of endless, forced hard labor. After the ships were loaded with sugar, gold, or tobacco, they returned to the Netherlands, making the triangular voyage complete. Although the Dutch history books repeatedly tell us the profits from slave trading were minimal, eventually many ships returned without cargo. The profits were so high, the merchants didn't even bother to reload their ships at all. After the monopoly of the West India Company on the transatlantic trade had ended, the Middleburg Commercial Company and the WIC caused the Dutch to dominate the transatlantic slave trade from 1750 to 1775. In this period, the Netherlands became the number one supplier of slaves to Spanish colonies in the Americas. The Dutch slave trade, piracy, and smuggling enriched the reigning Dutch royal family. 
In the early 17th century, Prince Frederick Hendrick orders the construction of many palaces and builds up an astonishing art collection. Formerly, Prince Willem V was the last member of the Dutch royalty who profited substantially from the slave trade up to the early 19th century. In 1814, the Kingdom of the Netherlands officially ends its participation in the Atlantic slave trade, partially because of the declining profits. But slavery in the colonies is not abolished until 1863, being the last nation in Europe to end slavery. Even up until 1873, the freed slaves are under government supervision, forced to work on the same plantations for a salary to avoid the collapse of the Dutch sugar industry. In 2002, Queen Beatrix opens the Dutch National Monument of History of Slavery during a chaotic ceremony where many descendants of slaves are denied participation. Up until this day, neither the Dutch royal family nor the Dutch government officially apologized for their role in the transatlantic slave trade.